Today's rifle comes from a company purposely stuck in the past, making old school lever action rifles and even old school revolvers now. But can the Henry Homesteader be the key to sort of un-Amish themselves and make a pistol caliber carbine to compete against the modern folk and their devilish recoil mitigation and standard capacity magazine? Now the devil! Five minute gun review, go! Hey, Range John. Oh, hey, Studio John. Have you ever heard of the Mag Shack? I think I heard about them in a TGC video one time. You should probably know about the Mag Shack. Oh, yeah. Why? Well, the Mag Shack does what the Mag Shack does, and you might need to know about the Mag Shack. Oh, you're being weird because of YouTube nonsense, aren't you? Yep. All right, I will look into the Mag Shack for sure. The Homesteader is built like a brick house. The solid walnut furniture is, well, solid, and that means it adds a little bit of chomp. Then you have the heavy-ish profile on the barrel, and you've got a substantial feeling rifle that tips the scales at 6.6 .6 pounds. The action is smooth, and we didn't have a single malfunction during our testing. The magazine well was ultra tight and kind of a to swap, but once I did, I was able to confirm with the old that's not going anywhere heard by middle-aged men around the globe. Five out of five brick houses. The ergos of this thing are as old-fashioned as having a rotary dial phone. When dialing, notice that I brought my finger around. Look it up, kids. That's a real thing. It's a traditional shape, and I think that could be improved. The gun is begging for aftermarket parts that would make it more viable as the homesteading gun it's named for. Three out of five wicker rocking chairs. The feature set on this gun is where things get interesting. It has a reversible charging handle, which I f love. It's super easy to swap from side to side and large enough to be useful while not getting in the way. It also has a last round bolt hold open. You can then swap out the magwell on this gun from the Henry design to one that accepts Glock pattern or SIG slash M and P mags. Honestly, I think Henry screwed up big time by only offering a 10 round max capacity mag because PCCs with tiny mags are dumb and smart people are unlikely to hunt with this thing, thus negating the need for a tiny mag. I also hate that the gun is tapped for a Picatinny rail on top of the receiver, but it's not included with the gun. Not only that, but if you did put some kind of optic on the gun, you'd have to get like a chin weld or maybe not even get your head on there at all because the cast of the stock is too low for looking through an optic. Thankfully, the stock adjustable sights are not total trash for plinking. Henry also screwed up by not including M-lock slots on the bottom of the handguard, but instead only providing a single sling stud. Yeah. In the redeeming category, the barrel is threaded and the gun ran really well with a suppressor. Three out of five Amish mafias. Ah, accuracy, or rather, how accurate we can be with the gun. This is fairly easy to judge. Because I was limited to iron sights, I was able to manage roughly two inch groups of 50 yards. And I'm sure with a magnified optic, I could get this tighter because the trigger is nice and clean. That's the first group. There's a fist. There's a fist. I was aiming here. I also shot it suppressed. And that didn't really result in amazing groups either at about two and a half inches. I suspect that mainly has to do with the iron sights not being intended for this type of shooting. From there to there is about two inches. So call it two and a half inches at 50 with open sights. I bet money that with a magnified optic, better grips would be easy, but without a pick rail in the box, I'll go elsewhere for accuracy. Three out of five metal stars on the side of a house. The value proposition on this gun is simple if you want an old school looking gun with some modern features. If that's the case, it's a home run. But if you are looking at it compared to other PCCs, things get a little more complicated. The MSRP on this Henry is 959. The Ruger PC has a similar style to it, but it's about 300 bucks less. As we get closer to the grand price point, the options get a lot more interesting as well. At the same time, I do love a good 
classic style gun, and I genuinely like this Henry a lot. Four out of five hay bales on value. That brings the total to 18 out of 25 living in the stick stereotypes. You can do it! And despite the negatives, I'd still recommend this gun because it ate everything we threw at it, had very little blowback while shooting suppressed, and was generally a fun gun for what it is.